This is Chicken Kata, Zambia. And this is malaria country, and I don't want to get malaria. So I'm taking one of these little pills every day. Malaria can make you sick, it can kill you, and it's particularly dangerous if you get it when you're a kid. It can also bring complications and lead to things like epilepsy. Most of the millions of people who are at risk for getting malaria every year can't afford these little pills, and that's a big problem. So what I'm noting is mom's history. She's saying he hasn't had any seizures this month, but I've seen two very brief ones since he's been here. So she only recognizes the generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Everybody knows someone with epilepsy in this community. It's too common for them not to. Conditions like epilepsy that are stigmatized just get left out because nobody advocates for a disease that everyone's embarrassed that they have, right? So it just gets put in the closet. Even though you can very successfully treat most cases of epilepsy with less than two or three dollars a year worth of medicines. Gretchen Burbeck from Michigan State knows getting epilepsy here is a kind of social death sentence. When I first arrived in Zambia, less than five percent of the people with active epilepsy were receiving treatment. And the reason they weren't receiving treatment is that there was a lack of awareness that epilepsy was a disease that would respond to medications and embarrassment that a family member had epilepsy so people would often be hidden, hidden at home. Children would be put away, they wouldn't be out playing, they wouldn't be known. And so epilepsy was hidden and in the shadows and until you bring it out of the shadows you can't hope to reach the people that need treatment. Are you well? Stepping out of those shadows are guys like Benjamin. He's got epilepsy, and Gretchen helped him. Now, he's trying to get others to talk about the disease and to get help at the clinic. Benjamin says it's one of his tasks he does every day, and think, he always thinks about it. He usually meets a lot of people. He can even go in the communities, wherever he hears there's a problem of such, and then talks to them and encourages them never to go for African herbs, but to come to this epilepsy treatment because he has seen great things changing in him from his experience and what has happened to him. Taking away the awful stigma of having epilepsy here is rough. Getting at the problem of making these people fit in is tricky. Well, the education addresses the stigma. So if people can understand that epilepsy is a disease like a lot of others that can be treated with medications, um, that isn't due to somebody's bad behavior or witchcraft, anything of that nature, if you can provide that education, you can decrease the stigma because if you provide treatment with, to people and they stop having seizures, they start to get accepted by the community again. More than 50 million people live with epilepsy, and almost all of them, about 80%, live in developing countries like this. It's not about taking little pills, it's about pushing hard to make a huge cultural change happen. Gretchen Burbeck is pushing hard. Without treatment, people have a pretty big possibility of dying of seizures or seizure-related injuries. That's important. But we also need to provide them the possibility of a community that can accept them and that they can live in that community as productive members as opposed to sort of marginal individuals.